Well, greetings, Grace Bible family. Um, this is obviously a midweek uh, service. I think I would call this the oasis in the middle of the week. And I thought during these days when we're not able to get together as a church family for church, I would add this extra midweek service, if you will, or maybe devotional message, whatever you want to call it. And that way we would have a another opportunity to at least talk with you and to communicate with you. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is not necessarily a full-length sermon like on Sunday, but I thought it'd be a good idea to, to share midweek. As I thought about that, I began to think about what I would say on Wednesdays because we may be doing this for weeks. I hope not months, but it could happen. And so I put together a sermon series or devotional series, and I have called it Living a Positive Life in a Negative World. So I think these devotional thoughts in one way or another will help all of us, particularly at this time when we're not able to get together on Sundays. This first devotional I call God will take care of you. Many of you over the years have no doubt um, shopped at J.C. Penney. Um, I have been in and out of pennies over the decades many times. And, but you may not be familiar with a little bit about Penny himself and the experience he had and about his uh, profession of faith. I'd like to share this with you. The year was 1929. J.C. Penney was a patient in the Kellogg Sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan. That's something I had no idea that was part of his life. He was broken in health and he was filled with despair. Getting out of bed one night, he wrote farewell letters to his wife and son, saying that he did not expect to live to see the dawn. But the next day brought an experience that changed Penny's life and restored his health. Let him tell it. I quote, When I awoke the next morning, I was surprised to find that I was still alive. Going downstairs, I heard singing in a little chapel where devotional exercises were held each morning. I can still remember the hymn they were singing. God will take care of you. Going into the chapel, I listened with a weary heart to the singing of the people. I heard the reading of the scripture lesson and also the prayers. And some, suddenly something happened in me. I cannot explain it. I can only call it a miracle. I felt as if I had been instantly lifted out of the darkness of a dungeon into the warm, brilliant sunlight. I felt as if I had been transported from hell to paradise. I felt the power of God as I had never felt it before. And I realized that God with his love through Christ was there to help me. And from that day to this, my life has been free from worry, unquote. Penny's chapel lesson dispelled his fears. It prepared him for a bright future. Obviously, he would become the founder of a department store chain, which bears his name. He had learned that God really cares. You know, that may be a difficult lesson for some people. I don't know. If it is, 
May I suggest that if your conception of God's care is dependent on the circumstances at hand, you may doubt his care. I think during these days, we need to be careful. Lest we allow the circumstances to control us, dictate to us, and take away our peace and joy, that doesn't have to happen. Just like J.C. Penney, he heard the word, he heard the prayers, and he heard God's people singing, God will take care of you. Honestly, I've read that story of J.C. Penney many, many times, and just about every time feel, I feel like I get tears in my eyes thinking about what God did for him. I had no idea at a certain point in his life he thought he would never live and even wrote letters of goodbye to his family. You know, it ought to be that we as Christians have joy even in the midst of problems. We don't have to be at the mercy of our circumstances. So I have a question. What do we need? What do we need to live in a positive way? Yeah, a lot of negative things going on out there. And there are sure a lot of negative people. But how do we live in a positive way? Well, here's my first thought. We need to change our thought patterns. If you have a Bible, I'm referring to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. There is a particular statement that strikes my attention. Don't start at the beginning of the verse. Look down at the end of the verse. And what does God say? Think on these things. You know, sometimes we skip over this and, and we, don't, we don't really listen to what the Word of God is saying. God just said, you need to think on these things. Meditate on these things. What things? He says in verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, noble, just, Pure, lovely, of good report. If there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, think on these things. I would challenge all of us. It's easy for us to read these verses and then not practice it. I should say to myself daily, Am I concentrating on things that are true? Things that are pure? What is right? What is honorable? What's of good report? I tell you what will happen. If you get around people who are negative and giving these horrible reports and always, always down in the dumps and always angry at somebody and always got some kind of an issue... It'll affect you. And I think that you will have to make a decision to stay away from toxic people. I'm not aiming at any particular person, obviously. I'm just saying sometimes we have to make a decision. If I'm going to think on those kinds of things, there's some people I, it's difficult for me to be around. I have another thought about thinking the right way. Reduce your intake of news. Now, I didn't say you shouldn't be informed, but honest to goodness, we have the dubious privilege of knowing about nearly everything that is wrong with the world every day. Think about it. Yeah, we're plugged into the news gathering services of the entire planet. And if we're not careful, we will find ourselves carrying burdens that are enough to break us down. And it affects you. You may not realize that. I remember the first time I ever heard a Bible teacher say, 
you ought to reduce your intake of news. I thought, I had never heard that before. And the more I thought about it, I think he's right. I think that I have to make a decision and you have to make a decision. As to the news that comes to my mind, I'm the anchor man who determines what gets into my mind. You take charge of it. Listen to what Ephesians says. I'll just quote it. For though once your heart was full of darkness, now it is full of light in the Lord, and your behavior should show it. Because of this light within you, you should do only what is good and right and true. Learn as you go along what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless pleasures of evil and darkness, but instead rebuke and expose them. It would be shameful even to mention here some of those things of darkness that ungodly people do. Those are pretty powerful verses. And so I remember 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. J.C. Penney found that out, that God really did care for him and love him. God really cared. I have a second thought. First of all, we should change our thought patterns. That is, we should make a decision to think on these things. But here's the second one. We need the fellowship of other believers. That's biblical. If you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, the Bible says, And let us consider one another. Why? In order to stir up love and good works. Let us consider one another. Let let us give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another. It, how powerful is that? I should be doing whatever I can for the rest of the Grace Bible family or others to stir up your love and good works, encouraging you to do good works yourself and, and to help others. In, in fact, this is in the context of the statement where he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You say, well, okay, but pastor, we can't get together right now. I, I get that. But notice the importance, don't ever forget it, the importance of corporate worship every Sunday. One of the purposes is to get the believers together so that they can learn to love each other and reach out to each other and have compassion and stir each other up to good works. If we can't get together on Sunday, at least reach out to somebody by phone or in some other way, Zoom, whatever. And at least it gives you a touch we had a little personal touch this past week to some families. And um, Joy was the one that had the idea, by the way. And it was Easter time, and she loves kids. And so she decided to put together some baskets, and we delivered them. And we just left them at the door. We, they, the families came to the door. We just said, hi, there's the basket for the children. It's just a, a little way to do something, that's all. It's not even a big deal necessarily, but it's encouraging other people and strengthening them and helping them, particularly in these days. 
I could give a whole series on, on this. Did you ever study the one another's of the New Testament? This would be a good Bible study. In fact, maybe during this, this time, I'm not going to preach on them, but let me give them to you. And this might be something that you'd like to do when, since we can't meet together on Sundays. Just listen. John 13, 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. Each of these statements has to do with one another. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, do you have a friend? God forbid, do you have a friend who's messed up their life recently or made some poor decisions? This says, if your friend has been overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one and do it in the spirit of meekness. Bear one another's burdens. Love one another, bear one another's burdens. Romans 14, 1, receive one another, receive the one who's weak in the faith. Ephesians 4, 32, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. Ephesians 5, 21, Submit yourselves to one another in the fear of God. Romans 12.10 In honor, prefer one another. Colossians 3.9 Don't lie to one another. Romans 14.13 Do not judge one another. There's two more. Galatians 5.13 Serve one another. And finally, in 1 Peter 4, 9, show hospitality to one another. That's a one another Bible study series. You ought to take it, study it, and then put it into practice. Let's encourage each other during these days. Good to talk with you in the midweek. I hope it truly has been an oasis in the middle of the week. Our Father, we thank you for your word and for your family, church family, that has been such an encouragement to me as their pastor. I trust I have been to them. Lord, may they be to each other. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen.